Matthew Jacobs. Well, hello, Johnny. It's great to be here. <laughs> it's Thank to you. See you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Oh man, it was absolutely my pleasure. Um, I like to start these interviews with the same question every single time, but it's uh, it's I find it to be a very interesting question. Why did you choose acting? Wow. Um. Nah. No, it, no. Yeah. I mean, this is going to sound weird, but it kind of chose me. Um, Doesn't sound weird it, at all. It's uh, I, I, my dad was an actor, um, and so when I was a little boy, um, obviously he was my hero. Yeah. And so, so I thought oh, that would be fun, and then I went with him to see um, him shoot a a show called Doctor Who in 1966. I loved Doctor Who. And he, was, he played Doc Holliday. And the director on that show uh, um, uh, remembered me. And then the following year, when I was 11, um, they reached out and, and, uh, um, and I got cast in a um, classic serial um, called Point Counterpoint, an adaptation of the Aldous Huxley book oh. for, for, for the BBC. So, so I started acting as a child. It wasn't really much um, in it. And then, of course, my dad was, was very much, he didn't want to be embarrassed by me or anything. So, <laughs> so he made sure that I, it was, he was quite strict. He, you know, he was like, he made sure that I arrived ready and with the whole show learnt. And, you know, because in those days you'd rehearse, right. like a theatre play, you'd rehearse in rehearsal rooms with stuff on the ground, um, uh, you know, tapes and little things. It was just like doing theatre. Oh. And then you would, um, and then you would shoot for two or three days. But because there wasn't really much video editing, everything had to be choreographed around the four cameras that floated around the set. So that was my start. They were shooting a play. Yeah, they were shooting the play. So you'd run it and then you'd have a note session with the director, it was Rex Tucker afterwards. And then, and so I did that for four episodes in 1968. Mm. And that's what sort of started me. And then, um, and then I went to the National Youth Theatre um, in Britain, which is kind, which is, Quite comp was quite competitive to get into, um, mm. uh, and you. It, what it meant was for a summer, um, uh, as a sort of sixteen, seventeen-year-old, you were suddenly in London and you were doing plays on the West End, and you were being trained by RSC direct Royal Shakespeare Company directors, and it was a, it was a really, it was really a good grounding. And then I got disenchanted with it, really seriously How disenchanted. Old were you? When I was about um, 17, hmm. um, 18, I just sort of yeah. lost, lost any interest in, in, in acting and drifted across. Um, I got a job as a runner for our Ridley Scott Associates. And, wow. and then they, they were very encouraging about hmm. me going back to university. And I went back to university, studied drama, then went to National Film School, studied filmmaking, and graduated as a as a writer, director, from editor from from the uh, National Film School, and then have been working ever since. And then what happened was there was only one person who actually knew I was an actor. Um, uh, was a director called Bernard Rose, who did uh, Immortal Beloved, Candyman, and mm. most recently we did a film called Traveling Light. Um, and uh, and he in in 2007. During as the last writer's strike was approaching, oh. and and as Tiny. and as all of that, he suddenly said, "Well, Matthew, why don't you come and do a, a piece with um, Danny Houston, just a small piece in Kreutzer Sonata?" But it was a day of shooting in the car. Were you trepidatious, like, "Oh, acting again? I don't know." Now, well, I wasn't like I, I was more nervous for him and for Danny, to be quite honest. That you know, because they didn't know what they'd be getting. That's fine. Um, and my my problem, you know, and, and I'd been I'd just been doing I'd been doing little bits and pieces, but not really as a sort of dedicated actor. Yeah. You know, so so this came up, and it was. And and it got me my what's it Taft Hartley at that yes. time, um, and uh, 
and and I and I was shooting for a day, um, doing something that I can uh, that I mainly get hired for when I do when I do act is is, uh, is I'm fairly good at improvising, fairly good at at um, taking a script and then building out and expanding it and then making it smaller. Do you know Do you, do you know what I mean? So they yeah. people expect me to sort of contribute in a workshop like way right. um to the to the work that the work that and they people offer. respect you well that's nice it's yeah <laughs> it's nice when it's nice when they they bring you on because of you you yeah. know which is very different to my first experiences as an actor where it was like oh my god well, he looks like this and and then going around the sort of cattle market of auditions that right. london was and we're talking about london in the 70s mm. which was about as inappropriate as you could get really but yeah it was I had not no a idea. good time oh yeah really <laughs> really wow. no the 70s was was pretty ropey and, um, but uh anyway for that's so that's why, so when you, and answer to your question, you know, what pulled me into it was really chance. It was just, oh. you know, being there at the right time. So I never thought I'm particularly good at it. When I went to university, I did a lot of acting in other people's stuff as well. And then they, and they would, then they would act for me. And then um, when Bernard came back into the frame, all mm. the way different in 2007, suddenly found, wait a minute, I really enjoy working on a digital set, you know, mm -hmm. working with, 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 this, with this different kind of discipline yeah. that you have when you're working, you know, in a, in a, with a digital unit rather than a, um, you know, rather than a celluloid. Much more and, space to be loose and experiment. And, and well, yes, and that feeling that, and then that gave birth, that gave rise. I then did a film with Danny Houston called Boxing Day that played the Venice Film Festival. It was just the two of us in the wilds. Oh. Up. It didn't get released here. Mm. It hasn't been released here. It, I think it will at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but that was back in 2012. Oh wow! And, and then we did, um, you know, and then we did uh, Mr. Nice. I played a a, um, a a Daily Mirror reporter. That was a big. That was a bigger kind of production in the UK. I've and seen you in Traveling Light. You're magnificent. And Traveling Light, yeah. So yes. we did all of them. You're a wonderful yeah, actor. Yeah, they were. Thank you. I mean, it was a Traveling Light was a interesting project because it was genuinely improvised in mm -hmm. as much as most times when we when we're asked to improvise we're really being asked to ad lib um, right. most times there's a script there people say we'll just play with this just scene or we'll, we'll work around with it with traveling light we started out with um just discussions with with bernard rose about about these characters right. um and so i sort of decided i wanted to be you know, like a um, home guard, you know, British kind of, um, you know, the, the home guard who looked after, made sure people didn't leave any lights on. And, and there was a, <laughs> you know, sort of very sort yeah. of, you know, very in, into everyone's business mm -hmm. um, based on a, on a wonderful actor um, called Arthur Lowe, whose work I adored. Oh, and of course, which... Yeah. Very few people would actually know about, but 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 it's certainly here. So sometimes I think it's really important in your mind, at least when you when e people are thinking they're hiring you because of everything that you are, mm -hmm. and, and they want that persona. But for me, in my mind, I want to find another persona, even if it's only something that I can put on in the morning that's slightly different to me. Do you know what I mean? And and. And I can and I can say, okay, this is I'm now Arthur Lowe, but anybody meeting me will go, y you're absolutely no different. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'll say, they'll say, you 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 sound and feel the They're same. They're like, so but you're it, playing yourself. The, yeah. That's right. They say, you're playing yourself, but but it's not. Do you know right. what I mean? It most right. definitely isn't the choices he makes. Um, so so it's a case of you know finding something to hang to hang on hang on to that is different to you and then and then um and then taking that thing which is whatever is your is your thing and in my mind i like to take whatever is a floor of mine or or a floor and i just yes. turn up the volume 
that on, baseline. On that, yeah, on that floor. So if so, if I have a tendency toward passive aggression, you know, as a as a personality, then I say, okay, passive aggression. Lean that's into a, that. I'm going to lean into that because that's interesting. It's going to result in lots of stuff. Um, if I have a tendency toward arrogance, you know, lean into, lean into. People are interested in flaws. Yeah. yeah. It's a, finding the flaw of the character you're playing yeah. is the is the first thing to do and then see whether or not that flaw is something that you have already and that you that you can work with that flaw and build it out many actors i've worked with have said it's amazing it gives you permission yes it does <laughs> it gives it's, it gives you permission to be a shit and you know and do and do That's all great. the all the things that you never thought you could quite say or something yeah. some, something there's a tremendous liberation involved in um, in 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 the way in which movies are shot these days. So it's a much freer. It feels like a, a freer environment. I've done little bits on big movies, mm -hmm. and I've been through that thing that I think all actors go through of going to see a movie that you are in. You be, you be, you did a week's work on it, you know, or two. You two or three days work and on it. And you prepped it. And you prepped it. You prepped for three months <laughs> mm -hmm. to say one line, you yeah. know, and and then you go and see the movie and you're not, you're barely in it. Do you it's know like, what I mean? Ah. You're just like, you walk. And that, every actor I've, I spoke to has been through this yeah. and it happened to me with, with Vice and I was cast as, yes. as Antonin Scalia. And I worked and worked for months, you know, you building the voice. the voice. I had one line. Certainly is, Dick. It certainly is. Um, and, and that was the line, and that was, line was in a in a sort of hunting hide, and we were meant to be shooting ducks. So I get my day in the sun. I'm going out to this lake. I'm having a fantastic time. I'm meeting <laughs> Christian Bale. Yes, I'm, I'm working with Christian Eddie Bale. Yeah, uh, I'm working with all this. I got so big-headed. It was like fa fabulous. And then and then I go to see the uh, SAG screening. Um, and I'm with my friend and I'm saying, I'm so fabulous. It was great. It was an afternoon <laughs> like this. And then we're watching it and, and, and I walk into the Supreme Court early on in the intro and I think I'm going to be in this a lot. Oh, this, is this, this is even more than what was in this place. Right. You know, sort of, I think of that. And then nothing. And then I'm, I'm then, then again, you see me come in and I, and, and I suddenly realized, this is this happens to all actors yes. because uh, yes. all actors are in that situation where where the story changes. Um, in my case, it was probably they thought my American accent was shit, and they no, decided to, no. to dump that. No, but, no, but, no, no. But, but they could but, have been for time. Could have been for too time. Long, didn't movie the story. It could forward. have been that I offended yeah. everybody there. You know, it was. It could, uh, yeah. Who knows? Not you. You're not there. <laughs> but you go around. Your mind is going. It's of like, course. why did she break up with me? Right. Um, and and so you're you're in this weird place. Yeah. Um, and and I think it happens to a lot of people. And it's so, not personal. And it's and it's never personal. So so you so those things those so yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And then like traveling light definitely worth catching. Obviously, Doctor Who Am I, which is yes. how I know you, because Dave um mixed yes. did, um uh, you know, did the sound design for this Absolutely. documentary that's a kind of performance yeah. because it tracks my journey right. back into Doctor Who fandom, yeah, um, and, it's a, and it tracks a journey of kind of like becoming a fan, yeah, you know, in a way. So there is a, there is, you know, they got to a point where we realised everybody was so nice yeah. that there was no drama, and so so there was that point where where there was that thing of like, well. I could be the full guy, you know. I can, I can be mm -hmm. a, a bit of a shit in the first half, yeah. and we can build it out for that. So there was a little bit of performance, but primarily it's a documentary, and so that's a different Love feeling. Love it. So, so it's, it's that's, that's Matthew. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. I hope some of that was useful. It was all useful. Stop it. You were the best. Thing.